All right, here we go. This is the lesson that, um, I mean, look, none of the lessons are super important. They're all important, but they're not important. Um, you're going to learn this stuff through osmosis anyway. But again, guitar tabs. What? What are guitar tabs? You hear all the time. You're like, what? Are, what? Should I read music? Should I read guitar tabs? Now, um, guitar tabs are basically, I'm just going to give you a bit of history lesson, right? So the reason why people learned how to read music was because the only way you could communicate your music was through the written practice of music. So if a composer wanted to show people his music, he would write the music out and then he would like have it delivered to other people or he would tour around and he would play his music or he or she play their music and then the people are like, oh my God, we love that piece. I would like to get that music and then play it at home. And so typically that was the reason there was like the distribution method at the time. That's how the equivalent of someone like passing out CDs or giving you their Spotify or giving you SoundCloud back in the day was here's my sheet music. You know, that's how it worked. So reading music in our generation is actually a super redundant activity because you have multiple ways to learn that are actually going to speed up the process a lot faster than you actually having the notes themselves. Now, guitarists um, typically suck at reading music. Um, obviously, if you're jumping into jazz music and you're jumping into like classical music and things like that, or like more like fancy arrangements, um, you will want to kind of learn how to read music. And if you need to do that, I can make a course about that. Um, but the amount of people I've had to teach how to read music is one. One student out of like a couple hundred. And then the amount of times that I've had to read music, uh, my last exam at Berkeley. I have never ever not once in my entire career as a guitar guitarist, live performer, uh, session player, ever, ever had to read music. Like pretty much ever. Um, the only time was like school band and that was it. But like being professional, being paid, no one's ever asked me to read music. Someone might give me like tabs or of like their, their part, but usually everything's either just by playing by ear or by feel. Um, so yeah, reading is a super, it's not a, a high leverage skill. Um, in some contexts, if you're like a, an insane session player, look, I'm not even going to go into that. You're beginners. So in the future, um, we can have chats about it and be like, oh, well, I really want to read music now. And then we can do that. But you're a beginner. The reason why music was written was to help distribute music, basically. That's the only reason you had to learn how to read music was because you couldn't play the music unless you knew how to read the music. But these days, you're going to have videos of people playing the guitar, people doing all this stuff, me showing you what to do in these videos. So you really don't need to know how to read music. But the one thing you do need to do is know how to read tabs because tabs are like the holy grail of guitarist communication between each other. Um, basically what tabs are is the easiest way for a guitarist to communicate what notes they are playing without playing it in front of you. Now, typically, uh, I will say majority of guitar tabs that you will find on the internet are wrong. Now, I said that they're holy grail, but they're also wrong. So... The reason I say that is they're a tool. They are going to help communicate where the notes are. But I always want you to think of like, if you're trying to figure out a song or you're trying to do any guitar part stuff, it's about just use the tabs as a guide, as a tool to be like, they're helping your ear not have to figure out where the notes are and then use your ear to train the rhythm practice of hearing how it should go and then connecting those notes. Anyway, Basically, when you go and see a guitar tab, it's actually, because you'll, you'll see it's like six lines and each line, I'm going to try and put the, a graphic on this side maybe. I don't know. I'll do it. I'll be a genius. You, once you see me figure this out, you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm so proud of Luan. Um, now, what's going to happen is you're going to have six lines and each line represents a string. Now, you would think that it would follow in chronological order, you know, like uh, the, the top line is the top string, but it's actually not. So the guitar is inverted. So if you're looking at the guitar tabs right now, 
The top line is the first string, so the highest pitch. And then the second line is the second string, third string, fourth string, fifth string, sixth string. Got it? Now, what that looks like as well is when we have the tab up there, when someone says first fret, first string, bang, that's where it is. Second fret, third fret. So it'll be confusing at the beginning when you start looking at it because you'll be like, oh, it's upside down. But the top string is the high E and then the second string is the B, third string is the G string, fourth string is the D string, fifth string is the A string, sixth string is the E string. Six lines, sorry, all the lines. So you got one line, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so when you're looking at the fret, um, the, uh, the tab, the way it's set up is the line represents the string and the number represents the fret. Um, they have no indication on which fingers to use, which is a bit of a limitation to um, tab. People try their own fancy ways to do it. When I write out my tabs, um, I am not familiar with a lot of music notation software. It makes me mad. So the tabs that you're going to get from me are going to be pretty, um, pretty bad looking, but they will have all the information on there that you need. So the content will be great. Um, presentation, I will definitely get like a C plus, but uh, I'm not mad about it. As we grow and we make further iterations on this course, uh, I will hire people and we will get them to make it look pretty. And then hopefully that communicates the content better for you and helps more and more people um, do it. But for just at the beginning, it's really, really easy. Um, each string, each line is a string and each number is a fret. Um, online on tabs, if you see a bunch of numbers in one line, that means they're all a chord. Uh, when I do it, I'm going to write, I'm going to space them out because I want to space out the shape of the chord. Um, that's typically what I do when I, sh when I just write out a chord because I like to do the shape of the chord as well for you. Um, so you know what it kind of should look like when, you, when you're fretting it. Uh, but yeah, that's tab. Uh, good luck. Have fun with it. Uh, remember, reading music is not a, an essential skill anymore in the music industry. Uh, it's all about playing music. So congratulations on finishing the fundamentals. Uh, and I am very much looking forward to immediately playing music. So we are not going to go through a bunch of scales and exercises and all that stuff. Um, we're going to start playing some songs. So let me know in, uh, in the feedback if there's songs that you guys want me to add to this course because um, I'm just going to be adding all the really basic, easy ones that I know work really well for brand new students. So uh, let's jump into playing some music. All right, see you all soon.